Keith, what's going on, big dog? What's up, man? Hey, just living a dream. So we are going to go over the one skill that is going to keep you from going broke, okay? Good times, bad times. If you had to focus on one skill, and that was all you could master, which we all know that's not the case, what skill is it that will keep you from going broke? And I would tell you it's the ability to influence and the ability to influence lets you sell and market to your clients. Okay. I don't think if there is anything more important to actually learning how to influence. And it also deals with leadership and leading your team to get the top job or the task done. Now, here's why I picked that. Okay. If you can't sell, your company can't grow. If you can't market and you can't get leads in and interested parties in, your company can't grow. And if you can't influence everybody on your team, Okay, to do the job that they have to do to help you guys move forward, you cannot grow. This is the one of the harder things I've actually had to learn over the past years. And guess what? Just because you can influence in sales doesn't mean you can do it in marketing. Okay, you have to learn how to write copy. All right, just because you can influence and sell to clients and maybe write copy doesn't mean that you can lead your team. Okay, so it's one skill used in three different ways the written word actually selling and actually leading that can either drive you to new heights or cause you to fail all right that's the one skill i would pick mastering if i had to keith what do you say where, where would you start the best training i've ever gotten on this is tony robbins the mastery of influence that's where i would start if you want to learn this it's, I think, like 300 or 400 bucks, and you can get it on his mobile app. And it's something that I feel so strongly about that my team and I go through it every six months. We do a training. So I break it down by units. We listen to the unit. We bring it in and discuss it. We're actually just wrapping it up now. And that is where I would start for influence, for writing books on a copy, anything with from oligarchy. He's unbelievable, and there's a couple others. That I can put in the show notes and then leadership, Yako Willig. Okay. He's by, by far the best and his stuff is not boring. There's a lot of people that write good, uh, great books, great information, very tactical, but it's dry and it's boring. Yako I'm books, sleep reading it. <laughs> it's, yeah, exactly. It's a great bedtime story. Yeah. You're, you're snoozing. Yako's books, yeah. he mixes in actual things that happen <laughs> in war. And then relates it to leadership and is very entertaining and it's a very easy read. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Have you, you know, let's pull up, let's pull that archives out. When have you had to take this and, and actually run with it and utilize it? Every fucking day. Yeah, that's every the, day. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> every day. Yeah. Every, I made a post today. I'll tell you guys, this is exactly key. I made a post today. The post was written copy. Okay, I made a video today that's selling one to many right. with written copy that what that I shipped out probably at 9 a.m. And then we're talking about leadership. I had my morning huddle this morning at 9.15, like I do every single morning. All three of those things I used before 9 30 today. Yep. I, that's a good one. <clears throat> I'm coming in the complete opposite of the fucking spectrum though. Let's do it. I want to. I want this to relate to people that don't have a team and don't have leadership responsibilities and don't have other people that they have to support in the capacity of their professional life. There's one thing to me that will keep you from, and I say going broke, whatever you want to call it, less making less money, making no money, and that is the art of being a copycat and emulating shit that you see working with other people. I think the world's gone fucking crazy. And I think the bullshit ass influencers in the world saying that they've created things and they started this and they were the fucking guy who did that and in, invented this. It's 2024. There's nothing that can happen that hasn't been around or happened in the past or mm -hmm. has been talked about in a different manner or a different light. But the art of emulating, which is what we all fucking get up and do every day, mm -hmm. by the way, is the key in my world to, to say that I know that I may not always make the most amount of money, but I will never be broke. 
because I can turn on this bullshit ass feed called Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or you name said platform, find someone doing well, copy them verbatim, hit the post button and drive leads or drive uh, the algorithm to for acknowledgement or whatever it is that I'm, I'm after. So for leadership, I would go find something that Jocko said and post about it or copy it in my inner circle or utilize that verbatim in what I need my employees to do if I'm trying to move them from A to B or whatever the case is. So emulation to me is like that, that it's the heartbeat in my opinion. Is if you can just see something, someone doing something well and copy them, if it's working for them, there's a damn good chance it's going to work for you as well. Now, it may not work on the levels that they're at because they've then taken the emulation and added in the ability to influence and added in the ability to do these other things. But from a, an existence or a pinnacle point, mm-hmm. emulation to me is like, all right, if everything else is fucking failing, go copy someone else. And if you do it like that way, then you will see success at some level. And what if they're doing something wrong or they're testing it out, right? Like I test out a lot of different things. So there's a lot of people that copy me. I've noticed it in my space. I've seen people copy the wrong shit that I am just testing. So I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Yep. Well, just you'll know that. Cool. You'll yeah. know it just like when you're split testing your, when you're split testing your marketing. Yep. You'll see that certain things, the way you say certain shit or the, the, the hashtags or whatever the fuck you use to get more shit. Yep. You'd be like, oh, these hashtags worked and these hashtags didn't work. Yep. Emulation itself isn't going to be the telltale end all be all. Mm-hmm. But when we're talking about like, where do you go from here if you're at rock bottom? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We started emulation. Yeah. Once you get good at that, then you start to understand what's working better versus not so good. Mm-hmm. And you start to lean towards the better. Because I also think to your point, like there isn't a one, it may start as one thing that you can do from going broke, mm-hmm. but it will flower into the leadership, the marketing, the copy, right? And yeah. But emulation at every level will get you there. Yeah. I wasn't always good at copy. Right. But when we started Black Label, copy became part of a service that we offered. Well, guess who had to go get really good at fucking copy? Yeah. Me. Because I had to be able to decipher when you send me something for an ads campaign and I say, these words are fucking terrible. We need yeah. to redo this. I also have to back that up with a product. With because. That is better. Yeah, this sucks because. And this is how you fix it. Right. And this is how you fix it. But it can't just be the green dog fell down the stair and you need to buy this product, right? Or whatever the fuck you would put there. So to your point, I don't think that emulation or leadership specifically are going to be the key. But I think if we start with those, it'll blossom into the other avenues that you need. Yeah. Here's one thing I would tell you guys, even when you're copying, okay? When you're copying, make sure you make it enough your own. Right. Everyone's got a certain style, right? Don't uh, chat GPT that shit and hit yeah, <laughs> Don't chat GPT it, number one. It should come from you because here's the reality. You put out certain messages over and over again, okay? The ones that come from you will sound like you. They'll be authentic. The ones that you just copy, people will be able to tell, right? right. A big thing is you have a couple influencers. I'll, I'll just name like Andy. A lot of people copy all the shit that Andy does, okay? How he sounds. There's only one Andy. Why would you want to sound like him? Same thing with Ed. Okay. Any anybody that is out there influencing and you want to influence like them, I would not do it the way they're doing it. What can you do to look at what they're doing? How many times do they post it? How many of their posts solicit business versus are just general posts? Those are things you can copy. What's what's the style? What time are they posting? You can certainly copy that. That works. But if you were to take one of Ed's messages and just sh- send it or share it, that's not going to look all that well. So it's not how right. you do things. And then right. I want to I want to touch on what I said about influence. I want you to understand, I did not learn influence overnight, nor did I learn those three ways to influence at once. The first thing I learned was how to sell one-on-one on the phone. 
that was a lot of sales training. It was a lot of practice. It was a lot of repetition. Once I got really good at that, I'm like, Hey, what else am I missing here? If I'm able to post, I can sell one to many. Okay. I can write better ads. I can bring more people to the table so I can speak with them. Okay. So then I had to learn how, how did I do that? I took a course on copywriting and I read almost every highly recommended book that there was on copy or, or mm-hmm. copy. And that's how I learned. And then I tested my theories. I tested email campaigns. I tested it on posts. I tested it on ads and over and over again until I actually got pretty good at it. And then the leadership thing, that was the hardest. I'm not, I can't even. We're still learning it. that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm still learning that. Okay. I got to tell you, I still get things wrong on that all the fucking time. And yep. same thing with, with sales. I don't have that master to lock down. I still let my emotions get the best of me sometimes. And that impacts certain sales calls I have. Right. And this is coming from someone that's been doing the thing he does for 15 years. All right. So if I still fuck up, that means anyone can really still fuck up. All right. And, but we still learn from it. Okay. No, you're the only one, dude. Yeah. You're the only one. <laughs> the only one is still making mistakes. <laughs> yeah. But what I will tell you about that and is I learn from the mistakes. I try not to make them again. And when it came to leadership, leadership took me. I would say I didn't start actively working on it until I was about early thirties. Okay. So I'm five years into this, four years into this, still learning, but I learned from Jaco and, and a couple others and Ed and Andy about leadership. And I can tell you that that is something that I am still actively learning and actively engaged in learning and the learning, even if you master something never truly stops. Okay, if there was a new book on sales or book on copy that that was crushing it and I I heard nothing but positives, I would go out and get that book and read it. And then I'd reread it if I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. So this whole idea of the learning stops once you get to a certain level. One throw complete. Throw that out. (laughs) Second, learning and figuring out where you're weak has a lot to do with being self-aware, right? So if you think you are the greatest when it comes to copy and your copy is not converting, you have one good post out of 10, guess what? You're probably not self-aware if you keep putting that shit out and you probably have to go back to the drawing board and say, hey, what could I do better here? Yeah. Yeah, that's me because I don't give a shit about posting on social media, which is probably a downfall. But the reality is, to your point, like if you're posting the same type shit and you're getting seven likes and no engagement, then there's probably something fucked up with what you're doing, when you're doing it or, or how you're doing it. Yeah. The point of that, what I think you're making is super important for people to, to grasp. Just because you see a scale of success doesn't mean you've reached the pinnacle, <laughs> right? It doesn't mean that you can just now become status quo and maintain that level of output. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the algorithms are always changing in social media and marketing and fucking sales and your competitors change, prices change, right? The economy changes. Look at where we're fucking at. Yeah. I never would have thought interest rates would be where they're at today. I never would have thought leveraging my HELOC to buy a piece of real estate would cost me 12 and a half percent. I never thought a hard money loan to buy an investment property would be 12, 13, 15%. Right. And so you can't go 2020, 2019, 18, 17, and do the same shit and win at the same level that you would be at today because those things have changed. The outside forces have changed. So to get some success means nothing. It's just a matter of time before you need to emulate the next thing, Mm -hmm. right? Or study and learn the next thing to your point. We talk to clients all the time. They're like, oh man, I finally did 20 million in revenue. I can fucking relax. And I'm like, if you relax now, you'll be fucking broke in three years. Mm -hmm. Because what got you here won't get you there. And that's a good book too. If you haven't read that book or read that book. So this becomes a, a fucking wash cycle 
rinse and repeat. But the repeat is always adding one or two pieces. Right? There's a little bit of seasoning you add or a little bit of flavor over here you add, right? To go to the next level of success. So with that being said, if you're struggle, if you're on the struggle bus, self-reflect, right? No, step one, figure out what mundane shit you're continuously doing, right? Smash your head against the wall. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, guys, is one little key doing, aspect. Make sure that you're implementing things in stages. Okay. So if you learn a new skill and you're trying it out with one thing, master it there before you go out and let's say put it into different areas of your company or of your life. I'll give you a great example here. You write a post and the post is fire, right? It's bringing you in more leads than you know what to do with. All right, great. Take that post, put some ad spend behind it or put it as an ad and run that and see if it gets the same results. If it gets the same results, great. It doesn't mean you massive copy. It means you mastered that one post that is really resonating with your audience, right? So the average person would think, okay, I made it. Let me just keep doing this exact thing. No, a smart operator is going to say, okay, I'm going to run this until I can't handle it anymore. And I'm going to go hire two people. And by the way, I'm going to have another post that's phrased like this, but says basically the same thing, but phrased differently. Let me go test that. You test that. If that doesn't work, okay. Why didn't it work? Analyze it. Put out another post. And once that post starts catching fire, then you have two things that run ads for. And then I would only hire people <clears throat> when you can't physically handle it anymore. You can't handle all the leads that are coming in off that. And then you might just want to sit in that zone and play with this because at the same time, you're getting profitable ads. You're getting more leads in from the post and you're honing and mastering a skill. Stay on that. Ride that thing until it drops or until it lowers and bring people in as you need them. That's how you want to win as an operator. You don't want to just get one post, think it's amazing, and then make all your plans around that one thing that happened exactly one time. I think okay? we call those people one hit wonders. Yeah, they do. In the music world, they definitely do. <laughs> no, that's a good point. A split testing those ads is great. And a little tip for those out there. If you do have an ad that's firing off well, use the same copy, change the image, right? Put a different flavor to it so it doesn't look the same. Mm -hmm. That's how you'll know if it's the copy. Or is it the image yep. that's grabbing people's attention, right? Yep. So we, we were actually doing this with a pool company recently. It was like, they're having problems getting people in. I was like, all right, well, how many people do you use or use you that finance their project? 80%. Well, so then why aren't you advertising from be, be hot as hell and sweaty and in your pool within 30 days for less than 350 a month? Yeah. And dude, we put something out like that and we split tested like four or five of them and they blew the fuck up. It wasn't the copy. It was the visual of the wife, right? Because studies show that the wives are the ones pushing for the pools, not the husbands, wife and kids. Yeah. So we put a picture of the wife and two kids with a hot, right? They're outside in a nice pool and put in there 350 a month. And guess what happens? Leads galore. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the copy, it was the visual. So a lot of people too need to understand like when you're split testing that it's split test, make sure you're paying attention to how it looks optically. Yeah. Right. So anyway, that's a freebie for you guys. Don't just worry about all the copy copy is important, but it's not the end all be all. No, but testing things is the end. All be all. And having the skills to learn something and then the skill and the discipline to execute on it are two different things. Okay. And so what I would tell you is you, the best skill that will keep you from going broke is the ability to influence. I think the three ways, sales, copy, and leadership all roll in and make you a really strong operator. And without 100%. those three skill sets that fall under influence, it's going to be very hard for you to accomplish your goals. 
And that is something that every operator, no matter if you're in the top 1% or you're just starting, that is an area that everybody should focus on and focus a lot of time learning. And even when you master it, go back, see what you may have missed. Here's a fun exercise I do. If I know there was a really great book and I've already implemented a few things, or I know there was a great training <clears throat> and I've already implemented it, implemented a few things from the training, go back through it. See what you haven't implemented yet. And if the other two things worked, give that thing a shot. There's so many people that just put the answers down. Most of the people that I speak with have the answers sitting in a room in their house. How do I know that? Because I've been that person that's had all the answers I needed in a room in my house. I just didn't go back and reread the book. Okay. And so the more of these books, and I hate, I never get rid of books. The more of these books you can read and reread and then implement things, the better. And the reason I don't tell you to go and you get 10 points from a book and try to implement all, all 10 is you're introducing so many different variables into your company, into your sales, into your marketing, into your life, that even if you do successfully implement 10 new things, guess what? You're not going to know which one worked and which one didn't work. You're going to have no fucking clue. Okay. You're either going to get a positive, things are going in the right direction, or hey, shit's falling apart. Let's start from scratch. Neither one of those are going to help you, and neither one of them get you closer to having a refined process that is actually going to bring in sales and revenue. Yeah. Well, then you don't know what portion of the 10 things you implemented are the things fucking things up. Yeah. <laughs> or, just, or, yeah. or the things going well. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Measure one no, I agree, man. Up, guys. Yeah, we get the measurements wrong enough. For, you know, from all measure the measure twice, cut once. There you go. Measure twice, cut once. Yeah. 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 I was always taught. And then I was like, you know what? If I just tell you I don't know how to read the tape measure, you'll do it. And I was like, perfect. I figured it out. <laughs> There's ways around everything. That is a superpower that all men know. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. Okay. Uh, all right, guys. Listen, you heard it here. Do us a favor. Share this. Leave us a five-star review. Get this in the hands of someone that needs to hear it. We appreciate you, and we will see you on the next Integrated Entrepreneur.